Oh, Christ, why does this exist? Yeah, remember that terrible movie we did last year about the killer snowman? Turns out there's a second one, and we're gonna look at it today as we're gonna review Jack Frost 2, Revenge of the Killer Snowman, which was released in the year 2000. Revenge of the Mutant Killer Snowman, I'm sorry, I didn't want to get his title incorrect. It's so very important. Much like the first film, this is a comedy, and I use the term comedy very lightly, slasher film that was direct to video, and directed and written once again by Michael Cooney. A lot of the cast from the first movie returned, including Christopher Alport as Sam, Scott McDonald as the voice of Jack, Elon Sheely as Anne, Chip Heller as Joe, and Marsha Clark as Marla. There's also some new additions, including David Allen Brooks, Sean Patrick Murphy, Ty Bennett, and Ray Cooney, who you may have guessed correctly, is the dad of the director. And unlike the first movie that only used practical effects, this movie also incorporated some really shitty CGI. So what happens in this one? Well, what do you think? Sam's trying to recover from the events that happened last Christmas, and wouldn't you know it, Jack comes back to haunt him and attempt to kill him again. Now you may have already correctly guessed that this movie is bad, but here's the million dollar question. Was it as bad or even worse than the first film? Well, we're gonna find out right now as we review Jack Frost 2, released in the year 2000. So our movie begins with Sam and therapy, still shook up over the events of the first film. Sam tells his therapist about the events, and his therapist, as well as his receptionist and other people listening over the intercom, laugh hysterically at him. Yeah, maybe get a new therapist, dude. Meanwhile, the FBI dig up the antifreeze that Jack was buried in, I don't know how the hell they found out about it, so they can experiment on it. However, one of the scientists one night conveniently leaves his coffee cup over the antifreeze, and then a janitor comes in and bumps it into the antifreeze, which wakes up Jack. Sam and his wife Anne, meanwhile, are going on vacation to a tropical island with Joe and Marla, who are getting married. Yeah, I remember near the end of the first film when they snuck away to Bone? Guess that turned into something. Their son Ryan, who I incorrectly called Tyler a bunch of times in my review of the first movie, is not there, though, and that's explained by saying he's at his cousin's house. What happened actually? Well, probably the actor just said, I don't want any part of this, and if so, good for him. They arrive on the island to meet the resort head, the Colonel, as well as his assistant, Bobby. But meanwhile, in the middle of the ocean near the island, two dudes are stuck in a lifeboat, and all they have to eat is a carrot, which they fight over, and then Jack kills them both and takes the carrot for his new nose. That night, Jack washes up on the beach, while meanwhile, everyone on the island is having a big party and having a good time, except for Sam. Sam gets snapped out of it kind of though by the colonel's other assistant, Captain Fun, who is incredibly annoying. Meanwhile, Jack sees three girls on the beach and kills them in different ways, one with an anvil, one with icicles, and one by taking some tongs and plucking out her eyeballs. The colonel and Bobby find the body the next day and want to cover it up, but there's somebody who doesn't want to cover it up, the former Agent Manners, who is now head of security on the island. Manners is played by a different actor this time, but believe it or not, they actually explain that by saying he had multiple plastic surgeries after what happened to him in the first film. And usually recasts are not explained like at all, so I gotta chuck them some points for that. Manners also implies to Sam that he thinks Jack might be involved in what's going on. Manners tells the colonel that they need to warn the residents, but the colonel refuses, as they can just call the police. Unfortunately, the phone lines have been completely washed out, and they'll have to wait till the next morning when a supply boat is supposed to come. Meanwhile, Jack has some fun by turning into ice and exploding the head of a sexy model named Sarah, and then also kills her cameraman, Greg. Sam, meanwhile, has a meeting with Manners as well as Captain Fun, who I guess is actually Manners' undercover assistant, and they form a pact to stop Jack. That night at the island costume party, Sam hears Jack's voice and chases it to the beach where he finds a carrot. A snowman then sneaks up on him, and Sam knocks him the fuck out, but it's not Jack, it's actually just a colonel in costume. And then encourages Sam to snap the fuck out of it, as this is starting to tear them apart. Later that night, when everyone's asleep, another sexy lady named Cindy decides to go skinny dipping in the pool. Jack notices her, however, and completely freezes the pool, drowning her. Jack also decides that this whole island is too hot in general, and decides to cool things off. And sure enough, when Sam and Anne wake up, they see that everything is frozen, and it's snowing. They're the only ones that seem to think this is weird, as everyone else is just having a big old snowball fight. Sam thinks it's Jack and Anne is starting to believe him, but Joe and Marla still think he's crazy. That is, until Jack shows up with some advanced snowballs and kills about a dozen people. Jack then reveals himself to our main cast, before morphing into the ground. 
Luckily, Sam packed a bunch of antifreeze, so him and Manners load it into squirt guns and go looking for Jack, while Anne, Marla, and Joe stay in the hotel room. While they're there, Joe and Anne realize that the way Jack followed them there is because I guess when Jack died and they put him in the antifreeze, Sam bled into the antifreeze, which mixed Sam's DNA with Jack's, so now they're connected. Manners and Sam, meanwhile, regroup with the Colonel, Captain Fun, and Bobby, and then they load a pool full of antifreeze to lure Jack into, using Sam as the bait. And sure enough, it works. Jack falls right into the antifreeze pool and dies. And yeah, that's it. Movie over. We did it, everybody. Jack's dead, except not really. Yeah, it turns out because of the experiments that happened to him in that FBI lab, Jack is now more resistant to antifreeze, and then he dives into the ground in the worst CGI effect I've ever seen. Manners chases him into the forest, because I guess that's where he thinks he's going, while Sam's brain seems to be broken now, because the antifreeze didn't work, and that's pretty much all he knows. They also pick up a snowball that Jack left behind, and that snowball ends up hatching into a baby snowman, which promptly kills Captain Fun. They end up trapping the baby snowman in a blender and try to think of different ways to kill it. Agent Manders, meanwhile, stumbles upon a shed full of dozens of baby snowmen, and yeah, that's the end of Agent Manners. Meanwhile, Sam's brain is still broken, so Anne decides to take charge on this one. Anne, Joe, and the Colonel go out looking for the baby snowman while Marla, Sam, and Bobby stay in the kitchen. And they have mixed results. Joe's able to trap one in a vacuum, the colonel finds the bunch of them in a forest and has to flee, and Anne finds more of them, slaughtering some more unnamed characters. Anne then pours banana juice on one of them, though, and it explodes. And guess why? Because Sam is allergic to bananas, and Jack and Sam are connected now, so Jack and his children are also allergic to bananas. Yep. So naturally, they load up on bananas and start a complete slaughter of all the baby snowmen. One of the snowmen is barely hanging on though, and it crawls its way back to Jack before dying in his arms, and now Jack is pissed. Back at the resort, they're cleaning up all the snowman blood before Jack appears out of nowhere and quickly kills the Colonel and Bobby. Jack then finds Joe and Marla, who run away and lock themselves in the freezer. He then traps Anne inside of him and is about to kill her before Sam, who's finally snapped out of it, shoots a banana through his heart, which explodes him. And then Anne comes up with the actual great and legitimately funny line of I fucking hate Christmas, and they walk off into the sunset. And believe it or not, this movie has both a mid and end credit scene. What is this fucking Marvel? In the mid credit scene, the supply boat is coming towards the island before a giant carrot falls onto their boat. And in the end credit scene, Joe and Marla are still trapped in the freezer, where they will probably die. If you're wondering about that giant carrot scene, this film was supposed to have a third movie called Jackzilla, where Jack turns into Snowman Godzilla and rampages. That's not a joke. So, let's answer that question. Was this movie better than the first movie? Actually, yeah. Just barely. But yeah, what's my criteria for that? Well, two things. One, nobody got raped by a snowman in this movie. So that's good. That's definitely a positive. And two, I actually have to give big credit to one of the actor performances, or should I say actress, Ellen Seeley, who played Anne, actually did a very good job in this film. She had a lot of good lines, she had a lot of good line delivery, she put a lot of effort into this, at times she seemed like she was the only one taking it seriously, and I actually legitimately enjoyed her performance. So, yeah, good performance by her, and no snowman rape. Based off those two things alone, I think this was better than the first film. Would I recommend you see this? Not unironically, but if you're into shitty movies, it's kind of funny. It's funnier than the first film, at least. So, sure, why not? But next week on the channel, we're going to watch an actual Christmas film, finally for the first time this month, as the day after Christmas, we're going to review Jingle All the Way. But yeah, that's going to do it for me and Jack Frost. Hopefully they never make that third film. Hopefully never. Dear God, if they do. But... Yep, that's it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave it a like. If you want to follow any of my social media links, they're all in the description down below. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting me and all my channels. I appreciate you guys. With all that being said, though, my name is Noah Taff. This has been my review of Jack Frost 2 Revenge of the Mutant Killer Snowman. That's a fucking title. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.